Hello and welcome to On Silver Screen, where learning is interesting. This is your host, Silver De La Rosa, and today we are going to talk about the types of contract. This is the episode 2 of our contract practice season. Please don't forget to support this channel by hitting like on the video and sharing the video to your friends, especially those who are preparing for their APC. And if you haven't done yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Now, why is it that as a quantity surveyor, we need to know what are the different types of contract? The various types of contract agreements used by organization also influence decisions for procurement management. It is therefore important that a quantity surveyor knew the different types of contract in order to properly select the one that will best fit for the project. Not only select, but to properly tailor the contract that will fit to your project. And if you want to know more about procurement management, please visit the season two of my videos where I discuss about procurement and tendering. Now let's go back to the topic. All legal contractual relationships generally fall into the following broad families or broad categories. Fixed price or lump sum contract, cost reimbursable contract, unit price contract, guaranteed maximum price contract, and time and materials contract. These are the types of contract based on how the contractor is paid. Now, let us discuss in detail these types of contract. Fixed price contract. It is a type of contract wherein the payment does not depend on resources or time spent, but rather on a fixed total price agreed by parties prior to commencement of the project. And fixed price contract have the following subtypes based on the manner that the contractor is paid. Firm fixed price contract, fixed price incentive fee contract, and fixed price with economic price adjustment contract. So what are the differences among these three subtypes of fixed price contract? For a firm fixed price contract, this one is favored by most of the client as the project cost is determined at the outset and not subject to change unless that there is a change in the scope of works. So the total amount will be agreed and this is the only amount that you will be paid. Let's take a look at this discussion between the client and the contractor. So the client said that my organization is planning to build a landmark project and the contractor offered to build a project for a lump sum price of let's say 1 billion. So this is the total amount that the contractor will be paid regardless on how much resources that he will use to build the project. The following are the advantages of firm fixed price contract. First, it simplifies the procurement process. It also lower or reduce the risk of the client. And there is a higher degree of cost certainty because the client already knew what will be the total project cost at the onset. And also because of that, the contractor can ascertain the profit margin at the early stage, provided of course that the contractor will complete the project the way he planned. Firm fixed price contract also has the following disadvantages. There is a higher risk for contractors and changes may cost higher to implement. It is because that for firm fixed price contract, there may be no price breakdown. So any changes that the client wishes to do or any variations that the client wishes to implement, the contractor can provide a higher price for such variations. And because of that, it may result to a more adversarial type of contracting and it is prone to dispute. Now let us take a look at fixed price incentive fee contract. So now the price is still fixed, but there is some sort of incentive for the contractor. So this arrangement provides the contractor and the client some flexibility as it allows deviation from the agreed upon metrics with financial incentives. The price ceiling is set and all cost above the price ceiling is the responsibility of the contractor. So how does it work? Let's see. Again, here's the contractor and the client. So the contractor can complete the project in 10 years. So that is the agreed duration of the project. But the client says that if you can do it in nine years, I will give you an incentive of 10 million, but I will also recover from you 
50,000 per day in the event that you will exceed 10 years. So incentive may come in a form of positive and negative incentive. It is like a carrot and stick. Fixed price incentive fee contract has the following advantages. First, it may result to early return of investment for the client. And for the contractor, it may promote innovation. It is because that the contractor will use all the available innovation and technological advancement for him to achieve the metrics and receive the incentive. Because of the incentive, it will also encourage a skill-based personnel assignment and promotes better project oversight and management. While the disadvantages of fixed price incentive fee contracts are, it will increase the procurement period because it will take extra time to negotiate and agree on the metrics as well as the incentives. It requires additional administrative cost, and contractors may be reluctant to entertain variations because if there will be a lot of variations, then it may prolong the project period. So the target metrics in our scenario, for example, will not be met. And because of that, it also increases the risk of dispute. Let us now talk about fixed price with economic price adjustment contract. This arrangement is used when the project spans over a considerable period of years or if payments are made in a different currency. It is a fixed price contract but with special provision allowing for a predefined final adjustment to the contract price due to changes in economic conditions. So how does it work? Let's take a look at again the discussion between the contractor and the client. So the contractor says that as the project will take about 10 years to complete, I have a serious doubts on the future of the economic stability. So the client proposes that we can still agree with the fixed price contract with a condition to adjust the price due to inflation, labor conditions, and changes in prices of major building materials such as steel and concrete. So the adjustment or the item that will be adjusted are predefined. In general, the following are the types of economic adjustment. First, based on established prices. So this is the adjustment due to changes from agreed upon level in published or otherwise established prices of specific items. So the next type is based on actual cost of labor and materials. So these are the adjustment due to changes in specified cost of labor or material that the contractor actually experiences during the performance of the contract. While the last type of economic adjustment is based on cost indices of labor and materials. So these are the adjustment due to changes in labor and material cost standards or indices specifically identified in the contract. So this is the very important thing. The contract must specify which particular cost indices or cost index to be used as reference. The following are the advantages of fixed price with economic price adjustment contracts. First, the agreed fixed price of the project can be significantly reduced as the contingencies that would otherwise be included in the contract price can be identified and covered separately in the contract. Also, this type of contract protects the contractor from economic uncertainties beyond his control. While the disadvantages are, first, there will be a low cost certainty at the time of award. Next is, it is quite difficult to administer and the client bears the responsibility of cost uncertainty. It is therefore important to establish the base level and conditions from which adjustments will be made. Let us now talk about the types of lump sum construction contracts with respect to contract documentation. First, we have a lump sum contract with schedule of rates. We also have a lump sum contract with bill of quantities. The bill of quantity has a provision for the tenderer to price for any missing items, errors for item descriptions and differences in quantities between the given documents such as drawings, specifications, and the BOQ itself. And then we have also the type of lump sum contract, still with bill of quantities, but this time the bill of quantities does not have a provision for the tenderer to make the necessary adjustments. I will discuss in detail the effect of these documents, particularly in valuing variations, 
in the future when I discuss about contract administration. Please watch out for that video. Let us now talk about cost reimbursable contracts. These are also known as cost plus contracts. These are the type of contracts that involves payments or cost reimbursements to the contractor for all legitimate actual cost plus a fee representing the contractor's profit. Do note that only legitimate actual cost can be reimbursed. This type of contract is best suited to projects wherein the scope of works is expected to change significantly during the project execution phase. And cost reimbursable contracts have the following advantages. First, the tender price may be lower as the contractor will usually not inflate the prices to cover for risks. Also, there is a sufficient flexibility in terms of design and other aspects of the project. It incentivizes innovation and you can ensure a higher quality output. But cost plus uh, contracts have also the following disadvantages. The cost certainty may not be very clear at the outset or at the beginning of the project. And it may require additional administration or oversight of the project to ensure that only the allowable cost is being paid. And this may result to a longer project duration since there is less incentive to complete the project in an efficient manner compared with the fixed price contracts. Now, cost reimbursable contracts have the following variants. We have this cost plus fixed fee, cost plus incentive fee, cost plus award fee. Don't worry, this is not rocket science. I will explain all of this in detail on the succeeding slides. Cost plus fixed fee contract. The contractor will be reimbursed for all allowable cost for performing the contract work and receives a fixed fee payment calculated as percentage of initial estimated project cost or any amount agreed prior to execution of the contract. The fee amount do not change unless the project scope changes. So take note of that. The fee amount does not change. So supposing we will have an example of a project cost or a project estimated cost of $1,000 and the agreed fixed fee is $100. Let us have a scenario of having a cost overrun. And supposing the actual cost now is 1,100. So the client will pay 1,100 plus the agreed fee of $100. In total, the client will pay the contractor $1,200. Now, in the event of cost underrun or the project is completed below budget, so let's say the actual cost right now of the project is $900. The client will pay the contractor the actual cost of $900 plus the fixed fee of $100, which is $1,000 in total. Now, if you look at it, the fee does not change. It is the same whether there is a cost overrun or cost underrun. Let us now talk about cost plus incentive fee contract. In this type of contract, the contractor will be reimbursed for all allowable cost for performing the contract work and receives a predetermined incentive fee based on achieving a performance objective set forth in the contract. Both the client and the contractor share the final project cost deviation from the original estimated cost based on the pre-negotiated cost sharing formula. So what does it mean? Let us take an example. Supposing we have the estimated project cost of $1,000 and the target fee is $100. Now, the cost benefit sharing ratio, so this is the pre-negotiated cost sharing formula. So for example, in the event of cost overrun, client will bear 90% of the cost while the contractor will bear 10% of the cost. In the event of cost on the run, client will take 80% of the benefit while 20% of the benefit will be given to the contractor. Now, let's make some calculation. In this scenario, first we're going to take a look at cost overrun. So supposing the actual cost of the project is now at $1,100. So the client will pay 
1,100, which is the actual cost, plus 100, which is the target fee. Now, the cost-benefit ratio will be applied here. Note that it will be a estimated project cost less the actual cost, which will give you a negative value multiplied by 10%. And this 10% is the contractor's share of the responsibility or share of the cost. In total, the client will pay 1,190. So because the actual cost of the project is 1,100, the contractor earns only $90. Let us now take a look at what will happen in the event of cost underrun. So supposing the actual cost of the project right now is $900. So the client will pay the actual cost, which is $900, plus the contractor's fee of $100. On top of that, the client will also pay the contractor its benefit for completing the project below the budget. So that is the difference between the estimated project cost, which is $1,000, less the actual cost of $900 multiplied by 20% or the contractor's share of the benefit. So in total, the client will pay $1,020. So this time, the contractor earns $120. So for cost under run, the contractor will get its target fee. And on top of that, the contractor will also be paid percentage of the benefit for completing the project below budget. Cost plus incentive fee contract can also include the following components. Maximum fee or the highest fee that may be earned by the contractor and minimum fee or the lowest fee that may be earned by the contractor. Let us now talk about cost plus award fee contract. In this type of contract, the contractor will be reimbursed for all allowable costs for performing the contract work but majority of the fee is earned based on the satisfaction of certain broad subjective performance criteria that are defined and incorporated into the contract. The determination of fee is solely based on subjective determination by the client of the contractor's performance and is generally not subject to appeals. So how does this uh, type of contract work? Let's take a look at this conversation between the contractor and the client. So. The contractor says that the project will have an estimated cost of $1 billion and he can complete it within 10 years. The client replied that uh, he will award the contractor with a fee subject to the following conditions. First, $100 million if the contractor can complete the project in 10 years or less. $50 million if the total reimbursable cost will be below 90% of the estimated cost. And the third condition is 50 million will be awarded to the contractor if the project will achieve a green mark platinum. So this is how it works. The client will set a condition and will set an award to the contractor by meeting those conditions. So usually the conditions will be about the time or the duration of construction, the cost of the project, and the quality of the project. Let us now talk about unit price contract. It is also known as remeasurement contract. It is a type of contract based on estimated or approximate quantities of items of works. The agreed unit rates included in the contract are fixed and in general, the contractor's overhead and profit are included in the rates. The final price of the project is depending on the total quantities needed to carry out and complete the works, or what we call the remeasured quantities. The unit price contract is only suitable if the resources involved in the project are well known, but the quantities are unknown during the tender stage. So in essence, unit price contract can be called a mini lump sum contract. It is because that the rates are lump sum. Once it is agreed, you cannot change the rates but the quantities will be remeasured. There are advantages of unit price contract, and some of them are, it is easy to assess and compare tender prices using unit price contract. It is also easy to accommodate variations. And there will be a shorter project duration 
since the construction can start before the design is fully completed. While the disadvantages are, the cost certainty may not be very clear at the outset, and it requires a lot of upfront work for the client or the QS. It is because that if the approximate or the estimated quantity is too far from the actual quantity, there is a possibility of budget overrun. And it increases administration or oversight of the project to ensure the correctness of the quantities being paid. Now, let's go to guaranteed maximum price contract. It is a type of contract agreement where the contract sum is capped or guaranteed by the contractor to a maximum amount unless there is a change in scope or client's requirement. It is a type of hybrid contract. It's because that there is a essence of cost plus. The contractor will be reimbursed for all allowable costs for carrying out the works. And there is also some characteristics of fixed price contract. It is because that the total project cost cannot exceed the agreed maximum price. The contractor bears the responsibility for cost overrun. Now, what will happen to cost savings in the event of cost underrun? Because we know that cost overrun is the responsibility of the contractor. So how about cost underrun? Cost savings will either be returned to the client or cost savings will be shared by the client and the contractor. Now, the advantages of guaranteed maximum price or GMP or the maximum amount to be expended can be ascertained at the onset. It can expedite the tender process and there is a potential incentive for low cost and efficient work. Also, there is a lesser risk for the client. While the disadvantages are, it increases the administration or oversight of the project to ensure the correctness of quantities being paid because it is a cost reimbursable. So the client must ensure that he, the client is paying the correct quantities or the allowable cost only. Variations will change the maximum guaranteed price and the contractor bears most of the risk. Let us now discuss time and materials contract. It is a type of contractual agreement where the client agrees to pay the contractor based on the time spent by contractors and subcontractors employees to perform the work and the materials used in construction, including the contractor's markup on the materials used. So no matter how much work in terms of time and material is required to complete the construction, the client will pay for it. Time and materials is generally used in projects in which it is not possible to accurately estimate the size of the project or when it is expected that the project requirements would most likely change. It is also a hybrid contract because there is a characteristics of cost plus contract. The contractor will be reimbursed for all allowable cost for carrying out the works and fixed price contract because the labor and material rates, including markup for overhead and profit, are guaranteed and fixed prior to commencement of the works. So it is a type of a combination of both. And in time and materials, there is no cost limit unless the uh, contract will add another characteristics of guaranteed maximum price. So if the contract will add this characteristic, then there will be a not to exceed clause, meaning a guaranteed maximum price places an upper limit on what the client can be charged by the contractor. It's quite interesting, right? It has a combination of few types of contract. The advantages of time and materials contract are, it provides greater cost transparency. It also allows greater flexibility on both client as well as contractor. And it can shorten the project duration as it allows the work to start without the complete set of plans. It may also shorten the tender period as it saves time in the initial estimating process. 
the desired quality can be achieved and it is less risky for the contractor. While the disadvantages are, the client bears more risk in this type of contract. There may be an increased administration or oversight of the project to ensure the correctness of quantities being paid because it is also a cost reimbursable type of contract. It can increase the project cost, especially in the absence of complete set of plans because the client may change his mind every now and then because there is no complete set of plans to follow. So that is why it may increase the project cost. It may increase also the likelihood of dispute to arise and any inaccuracy on estimate may leave the contractor with low profit or it may deem not worthwhile to do the works. Now, let us review the type of contract. We have the fixed lump sum contract, cost reimbursable contract, unit price contract, guaranteed maximum price contract, and time and materials contract. The GMP and time and materials contract are what we call the hybrid contracts because it has the characteristics of the other types of contract. And only the fixed price contract is lump sum, the rest are remeasurement contract. It is also common to see a combination of these types in a single contract. Join me next on Silver Screen as we discuss forms of contract for our episode 3 in our contract practice season. If you like the video, please hit on the like button and you can share also the video to your friends, especially those who are preparing for their APC. And if you haven't done yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you for watching and see you next episode.